So the recording is now uh, going on, please. And hopefully you can all see my screen. Yes. Great. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, I am Elie Papadopoulou. I work for Athena Research and Innovation Center in Greece. And uh, one of my roles there is uh, a res I'm responsible for uh, the product, uh, a product that is dealing with uh, research data management and specifically data management planning, which is called Argos. So this is one of the things that we will be talking about today. Um, before we will, um, we will see also what are the steps involved in the research data management lifecycle. Um, this is not me here that you see. This is an avatar that we have created just to, um, you know, to feel uh, better when we talk about research data management and plants um, because some people get very frightened about these terms. Um, okay, so let's see, this is an overview of my presentation. As I said, we will be um, going through the different steps of research data management life cycle. We will um, see what a, a, what a DMP is, data management plan, short for DMP. Uh, what is Argos, the service uh, that is provided by Opener for writing data management plans, and also we will have a demo uh, on the data management plan uh, that we have created for Chist Era uh, in Argos. So starting with the research data management life cycles, let's see who is involved in them. Um, who is involved in the, in the creation of, of, a, of data, in the preservation of data, uh, in the analysis and curation and so on, all the different steps. Uh, and why we need them? Because uh, for researchers, for example, we, uh, we, are, um, we, we result with better data uh, following the research data management practices, um, more qualitative data, and more quality of the data. Um, we have best practices and standards that we can follow uh, that will help us uh, apply uh, the fair principles that also Emma was mentioning in the previous uh, modules of the course. Um, we can comply with the policies that um, are developed uh, for research data management, and we can gain credits from um, citations uh, when data are cited from our peers uh, in, in different um, repositories and in, in, in different um, uh, venues and platforms. So um, the research funding organizations that are involved in data management, they um, they can, this helps them to monitor the research and to avoid duplication of, of research that's been done. Uh, they can better control their funds and they have, uh, they, they increase the research excellence from having better quality uh, of the research of the data and the research uh, overall or that they fund. Plus, it's easier for, uh, for them uh, to identify what are the areas and uh, that. Uh, can, can can formulate uh, uh, in innovative solutions and innovative products. Uh, for service providers, service data management means that they apply they they apply and they also um, they also develop standards and best practices uh, and they find what are the gaps. Uh, and where, what are the tools that, uh, that can support uh, and can close those gaps in, in the data management life cycle in support of researchers uh, practices. And uh, they are more targeted to um, supporting the data intensive activities through their uh, services. Research performing organizations, it's similarly to research funding organizations. Uh, this helps them to identify uh, and increase the research excellence. Um, it helps them to uh, communicate a research better since it's findable, it's accessible, uh, and on all these aspects. Um, they, they can also monitor the, the, the research and they can see uh, through that, they can understand what are the trends uh, and where they can uh, probably, um, you know, what are the areas that they need to uh, 
uh, focus on supporting better, uh, probably if, if it's identified that it's needed. Uh, and all this, um, all this is, uh, all these activities are targeted, um, are central, let's say, to, to researchers. Researchers are at the center of, of research data management activities. Uh, while we're talking about research data management, I think this was also uh, evident in Emma's, um, in Emma's presentation. But uh, just to recap again, it's uh, three different things that we would like to achieve. It's repeatability, replicability, and reproducibility. And I took this uh, very nice uh, table from, uh, you, you can find it in this uh, paper, Incentivizing Reproducibility from ICM. Uh, and it really, it, it helps in a very good way, in clear way to understand what are the differences and uh, clarify uh, amongst us uh, why we're doing it. Because at the end, we want everything to be reproducible. But, um, uh, but sometimes we uh, confuse reproducibility uh, with repeatability and replicability. So what this means is when something is repeatable, means that I can, uh, I, that, uh, that I'm a researcher and working in a group, can uh, repeat the, this, uh, this result in my, in my practice uh, with the same and, and get the same results. Uh, when something is repl replicable, it means that the different groups outside of my team can um, repeat uh, the research and have the same evaluation, uh, same results. And when something is reproducible, it means that a different group outside of my team can um, take them and use them and produce different, um, different results through, um, let's say, applying different methods, more, um, um, in a different, on a, based on the different disciplines. So this means that we can have multidisciplinary research uh, and not only, um, not only sharing research amongst uh, common research communities. And by, by doing that, uh, and, and to do that, we have open and fair principles. Um, and you see uh, something uh, that is open can or cannot be fair and the other way around. So these are um, the differences and, and the commonalities where they intersect, wherever the two different um, areas intersect. But um, Emma has covered everything. So this is just a, a reminder. Uh, and why, oops. Yes, and where we can see those principles, we see them in the research sector. Uh, they are applied uh, nowadays in the research sector, um, meaning that all uh, big funders like Chist Era have um, developed and adopted a policy for research data management, and uh, researchers can follow this policy and um, co comply uh, and also produce, actually, uh, achieve uh, open, fair, and also repeatability, replicability, and reproducibility of research. Also, we see that in academia, uh, some of uh, uh, some some big universities have already um, adopted policies for research data management, and this is a, a requirement for uh, the PhD students to get, uh, in most of the cases, to get their PhD. Um, and also, we see that uh, this. Uh, data management and, and open and fair are highly are, are actually at the center of uh, the um, uh, European Open Science Cloud, which is currently realized. And not only it, it um, drives its architecture and how it's uh, and how the European Open Science Cloud uh, looks from the back end, but also uh, it drives researchers uh, practices as it has, uh, it includes services that support uh, all the aforementioned uh, open, fair, and so on. And overall, the object, uh, the, the objective is to have a 
open and fair digital objects. So not only data, but other digital objects such as code, such as uh, research results like workflows, uh, like publications, uh, or everything that is uh, in a digital format, uh, research outputs that are in digital format to be open and fair. So you might have seen uh, around um, how a research data management lifecycle look like. Uh, it shows, uh, oops, yes. It, it might look it might look like this. So you might see, ah, also, I'm sorry, uh, just, um, just something. If you want to ask something, please add your questions in the Q&A and we can answer them uh, or later on, or you can uh, interrupt me. I don't, I don't mind. It's better if, if we have a discussion better than, you know, only presentation. So at any point, please, uh, please. Uh, interrupt or add your comments. Um, yes, so about the research data management life cycles, um, you, you might have seen this is a very common one with the, the bubbles, uh, the circles, and uh, it shows, um, you know, how our activities, uh, how our workflow um, within the, in, of a research um, it shows the data management workflow in a research uh, activity. So we start from data creation, we go, so we create and collect our data, we go to data processing, so we, are, you know, we, we process our data, we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, we analyze our data, we preserve our data, we give access to our data, uh, if and how we are doing it, if there are restrictions, we'll see, and we uh, that can then reuse and select how we can reuse or how others can reuse our data. Similar uh, is the, the following research data management life cycle, uh, but it, it, it splits some of the steps uh, into different, um, um, yes, it splits some of the activities into different steps. So we have plan, we have create, process, analyze, preserve, share, and reuse. This is again uh, follows the same logic and has the same uh, output at the end, um, but it's described uh, with a different way. Uh, we see that we have data um, sorry data management plan, collection, description, uh, analysis. We have the storage where we store our data, uh, how we um, for how long we um, have the data retention period, uh, how we promote the data, and how we search and reuse our data. And uh, we move on to more complex um, complex graphs, such as that one. Again, this same logic and the same uh, output produces the same output. Uh, we start by con conceptualizing, having an idea, we then create or receive uh, data we then uh, select which are the data that we want to continue with, uh, ingesting them, preserving them, storing them somewhere, providing access, transforming, uh, and so on. And, but this also uh, shows other uh, concurrent um, practices, uh, not only attached to researchers, but also to repository managers and to data stewards like the curation of the data or the preservation of the data. So they all mean the same, and they all uh, for, have the, the same practices uh, for researchers to follow. This is from the Open Science and Research Initiative, uh, and uh, it's a different, again, life cycle, um, which doesn't affect anything, uh, how, how different the, the graph or the in, in interpretation of the different steps can can be they don't affect the quality of the data or the steps um, and the best practices that are attached to them. So we start from the hypothesis. In the hypothesis, we consider uh, what are the financial requirements. So we start calculating the costs. Uh, we break down uh, like in in our research we have uh, you know working groups uh, sorry work packages 
and um, in the work packages we we start uh, understanding what are the activities that we're going to undertake and what will what we'll need and cost them and you know cost uh, pro produce a list of costs based on that so that's in the hypothesis Data collection, we clarify the usage rights and we assure that we give credits through citations. So we collect data uh, and we have to see um, if there are any, um, any, if there's any copyright attached to it, uh, we should clean that. And if uh, there are citations, uh, are, if, if citations are provided from the data owners up to site, uh, the data that we have collected and so on. Um, similarly to how we are doing with publications, with the references. Uh, in the processing, we make use of open source software and open inf interfaces. So um, to avoid mostly um, um, increasing the cost by uh, getting more services where we can, or software uh, where with which we um, process our data. Uh, we store data and results. We make use of service infrastructure. Uh, we attach a persistent identifier to our results. We attach the script metadata to our results, publish metadata with an open license. All this you've seen also in the previous course, but here you are viewing it from the um, from the perspective of a research data management lifecycle and not of the fair principles perspective. But all these are, if you, if, if you, uh, if you were uh, with us uh, the, the previous uh, two courses, you can already, I think, identify which element goes where in the research data management lifecycle where we're talking about open and fair, which is very useful if you, if you feel that you can already do that. Um, yes, you can attach the script metadata and publish metadata in open license. Then long-term preservation, um, the activities that um, ensure that you have preserved your data um, in, in, a, in a correct way following best practices is with use of services that safeguard the presentation and integrity of materials and with um, having um, standard metadata. Uh, describing your data with uh, metadata standards, basically. And publication and distribution, uh, you publish your metadata with an open license. So we, we have to um, attach, uh, assign a license to our data. Um, we can have open evaluation uh, on, our, on our data and on publication, uh, ensure that there are links uh, between the publication and the data and the methods uh, and all the different elements and make use of institutional repositories for that. Um, for reuse, we again clear uh, citations and ensure the accumulation of credits uh, by, by doing that, by referencing uh, other people's data. So reuse data. This is um, this, this is something that I would like you to answer. Uh, what, do, what do you perceive as reuse data and what are uh, the different things in reusability that you are, um, that you are called to address when we're talking about reusability? I will give you a hint. It's two uh, different things when we're talking about reused data uh, that you have to have in mind. And I don't know if anyone would like to let to to say out loud what um, what they perceive when hearing about reused data. I don't know, Emma, if, if there is anything I'm trying to see. No, there is no, but uh, nothing written in the chat or either in the question and answer, but if they want, okay, that now it's coming. So Stefan is saying uh, reuse data is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Great. But what, what do you mean by reuse data? 
in scientific sense. Maybe we can also um, allow you to speak if you want. Let us know if you want to open your mic, you can raise your hand and I can um, give you the permission to. Okay, so Stephen, if you want, I am asking you to open your mic. Let me just, uh, there you are. So I think you, we can hear you now. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, no, I was just thinking that uh, in, 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 if we have um, a study done with some set of data and then there's another guy coming and doing uh, uh, another study on that data, so we have comparability, right? So for that sense, I, I thought it's good. And also, as I think it was on the slides, so um, if I um, make the data available, then others can, oh no, you had these three terms, but basically can, mm -hmm. can uh, the study and um, confirm the results, maybe in different environment. Exactly. So you you you're correct. These are the two things that uh, we'll we'll see now. That we have, uh, and, and thank you very much for uh, for your answer and for for the interaction. Uh, we have existing data that we uh, that we know that, that they are somewhere. They have a DOI. Possibly they are in a repository. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's our data that we have, uh, you know, we, we have from a different project that we were involved or it's others data, uh, but they exist uh, and they are described somewhere and we are reusing them. So how I will be reusing those data uh, is very important and the, the, the steps, well, like the, what I have to have in mind uh, during this, uh, when, when I'm dealing with existing data that I am reusing, is to check copyright, make sure that uh, I don't violate any copyright, uh, perform copyright clearance. We have some tools and uh, we will see in Friday how you can do copyright uh, clearance uh, following some, some steps. Uh, we, we check the license, uh, we check, pro you know, showing how uh, we can uh, probably we can remix sh should we uh, reuse them but share them uh, in, a, in in which way we can share them again probably with the same license or not um, all these different all these different aspects that need to be taken into consideration for that part for the other part again uh, correct we have new data that we are now um, producing or collecting um, that they are derived from our current activities. They are not described somewhere else. And we uh, there have to uh, have have to have in mind how others can reuse uh, our data. So we have to make sure that we assign the licenses uh, based on how we would like others to reuse our data to uh, um, to attach uh, any conditions uh, to let them know how they can access the data um, and, and, and so on. So th these are the two different uh, aspects that I want to highlight. And it's very important to understand because we will see that uh, later in the template uh, during the demo. Um, yes, uh, and that's why I wanted to highlight that. Um, so we'll uh, quickly go through each step uh, and see um, in more uh, details what we can, what is um, what is uh, needed in in steps. So for planning during the planning pro uh, process, we first have to cost uh, how uh, resource data management activities. Um, all our resource data management activities. And I've added here a guide that was developed uh, in Open Air in the Digital Curation Center. Uh, and um, you can, we can have a look later when I'll share the slides with everyone. You can see uh, that there are two different things that you have to consider when costing resource data management the services that you might have to acquire or you might have to use uh, in order, for example, to store your data or 
to, um, to transcribe probably the data depending on uh, the, the, the domain that you are in. Um, but also how you will uh, preserve your data. Maybe you will need to uh, have an encryption um, mechanism that you need to, that, that you don't have and you need to, um, to acquire. And these are costs, uh, and this is significant costs. But also, um, up the, the other uh, set of costs is uh, people uh, and uh, work uh, that is required to perform all these activities. Will you have a dedicated man data manager, for example? You, you have to consider that from the beginning, from the planning um, and during, during costing uh, of the risk data management. Will you have uh, a data manager that will be dedicated for this project? Will you have uh, people, uh, like, I don't know, you, will you have students working for, um, uh, for the for some different bits here, like data um, ensuring data collection, ensuring data documentation, for example, because um, because this also affects um, affects costs. And there's also in uh, for for IP uh, in particular, there's also this uh, great tool IP Costal, which shows uh, the the costs during submission. Uh, in, in different uh, countries, or what are the costs during submission of a, um, of a patent um, and um, yeah, other procedural uh, costs attached. Um, yes, so basically we're going through the, the whole, uh, through each of the, um, of the different activities, uh, preparing data, collecting data, documenting data, and so on. Uh, and we um, try to calculate accordingly. So um, then during the creation and collection of the data, we have to ensure that we um, that we also have the right metadata in place. Uh, for discovery for, for others, but also for interoperability. Uh, you see here uh, that this, this is the minimum with Dublin Core uh, set with minimum metadata uh, required, which th this uh, can secure how, uh, our, how our data um, and metadata records are uh, ex exchanged between uh, platforms, compatible platforms. And this is a more, um, you know, extensive list, let's say, with more metadata, rich metadata, this is from the open air um, guidelines. And here we, we see that this also enriches, um, enriches the information exchange uh, on, on, different, um, on different entities and, and, and different um, aspects. We can have general or domain specific metadata standards, um, which we, we will see during the demo, because uh, uh, there are different needs in, for information exchange between the research communities, uh, other things required. And even, from, uh, even within the same research community, there are different needs based on the exact um, uh, the exact area that is being researched. Plus, we have um, plus we have metadata for um, uh, PIDs for for uh, other things. Um, during the process, we see that uh, the process is uh, the, the phase, the operational phase during which raw data. Is, in, is being manipulated to result in meaningful information. Um, and during this process, uh, we clean and tidy our data. For example, we might be, um, we might be performing, um, if you see here, I don't know if you, if you know Open and Find, it's a very good tool where we can, um, it, it, it identifies uh, all the variables that uh, have been maybe miswritten or you know they have mistakes and uh, they have some um, 
some uh, some missing information in some columns and so on. So it identifies all the different errors uh, and the different ways that uh, the same um, uh, the same variable is uh, expressed, and it tries to combine them and uh, merge them in order to uh, then uh, we get the clean version of our data and use them uh, in, um, uh, in, in the best way possible. And there, yes, during this process, of course, we might uh, perform uh, anonymization. But again, it depends on the domain that we are and the data that we have in the domain that we are uh, working in. We, we might um, have to do an anonymization, perform an anonymization of our data. This is a, a tool to do that. We'll see that on Friday. Um, yes, for others not to um, be able to identify and cross-reference um, specific um, specific entities and variables found in, a, in, a, in our data. So yeah, these are, these are some of the process ingestion, aggregation, analysis, classification, metadata enrichment. This can be done during this uh, step. Then uh, during um, the analyzation of our data, uh, the, this is the part where we start producing outputs and prepare for sharing our data. So we use uh, different methods and tools and software for that. Uh, we might be using notebooks or end-to-end -end code scripts for statistics. Um, we might be using RStudio, for example, uh, Python, MATLAB, uh, again, uh, different uh, software, or we might be using our, our own uh, scripts to, to analyze data. For preservation, um, there is uh, what we need to, to have in mind is, um, and be, be mindful about is the backups of our data. Um, and this helps with performing, let's say, an informal risk assessment of it ourselves. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you know the three to one backup rule, but it says that uh, you need to have at least three copies of your data uh, to at least uh, be stored in two different types of storage. And one of these types of storage to be uh, not connected with internet, to be an off-site um, storage. Um, and I would like, okay, that I will make the question afterwards. <laughs> and, and here, yes, we, we see that uh, we need to, to be aware of the frequency of when we, we, when we back up our data, uh, what is the storage that we are using, what are the methods, like this is a method, but also uh, if we're using um, an external provider, they, they might have backup uh, plans, so we, we have to check that uh, as well. Uh, and for preservation, again, um, backups, backup is different from preservation. This is for backup and for preservation we use services, as we saw with Emma, like, uh, like services like uh, trustworthy repositories found in re data, uh, where we uh, store our data for the long term. And here is a question. What is the difference between backups and preservation? What would you say? You can again use the chat or question and answer or raise your hand and I will let you speak. Okay, maybe it would have been easier if it was if I used the menti, <laughs> but I, I like to listen to. Yeah, people. but the, the, the comments are coming. So Anne okay. uh, is saying, is that relates to the format in which we store the data? Uh, 
backup is exact copy. True, backup is the exact copy. Uh, if it relates to the format, it, it relates to the format, yes, but I don't have that in mind uh, for now. Let's let's exclude the 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 format for now. What are the differences apart from um, from the format? Okay, so I will keep that because it, it's it's true. Backup is the exact copy of the current version of our data. And preservation has uh, the a, a copy. Oh, is it something else? Preserve. Yes, preserve mm -hmm. means guarantee that the data will stay over time. This exactly. Is John. Because yes, thank you. Exactly because they are relocated to a different uh, storage, different storage facility where they are preserved in the long term whilst backup is uh, ensures the current version now and it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is linked with uh, the long-term uh, facilities. Thank you very much. That was nice. Okay. Um, next, um, during preservation again, we, we see that the format as a very nicely, who was, it was uh, Anne mentioned. Uh, we, we need to have in mind the format, but also the PIDs, the persistent identifiers, uh, which, um, which we allow uh, others to find our data with and, and access our data in the long term access mainly. Uh, and there are different kinds of PIDs. There are PIDs for digital objects like DOIs, which is the, the you know, the, it's used uh, in the world community, in the world open science community. Um, it's the handle registry. Some, some of you might have came, come across that. It's ARC and it's other that are used um, in, in some domains, but uh, DOI and handle are the more um, popular, let's say, and they're mostly most used. Uh, for researchers, we have PIDs for researchers, so ORCIDs. I don't know how, uh, how many of you are aware of ORCIDs and have already an ORCID, but this helps to have all your um, be distinguished. From other, um, from other researchers that might have the same name and surname as you. Uh, and also with, and this distinguish, um, the, this aspect that distinguishes you from them is uh, held in the PID, uh, in the persistent identifier that you get uh, for your publications in your data your profile and there's also for funders there's a funder registry which also assigns um, PIDs to funders uh, plus there are uh, other activities uh, like uh, research activities uh, where people research projects where people can also uh, assign PIDs to them so there are different standards and protocols in place for PIDs was there a question ORCID is a not good solution. They do not keep track of your publications. Um, that's, a, that's an argument. <laughs> a debate. Let's, let's have a debate, but at the end for that. Um, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Uh, and yeah, Emma, Emma will uh, make sure that I don't forget. Sure. About that, okay, thanks. Uh, and for PIDs, yes, moving on from preservation, uh, having preserved our data and having um, you know, backed up and preserved our data, we then uh, are called to or to take um, um, to, to take um, um, the role of open, as uh, mentioned, or closed or mediated access. So we we have to let other researchers know how 
that we are sharing our data. Uh, and in the sharing uh, of data, we mean that researchers, other researchers need to know about the naming conventions that we have used so they understand exactly how they can reuse our data. And this means what are, you know, different letters, characters, abbreviations that we have used in the files and the folders, but also, um, but also in our code, uh, how we, how we might have um, the type, how we have the types of variables, prefix, and examples, like providing examples for that. Um, the means of sharing, how we are sharing them is important. Uh, do, we, do we share them by a Google Drive, for example, which is very debatable and um, which is, uh, yes, but, but it's been, it, it can be done by a commercial cloud, but it's not a best practice. Uh, do we share it by a cloud infrastructure for research like B2Share? Uh, so we use um, a specific uh, specific service for that. Do we uh, serve it via FTP servers? Do we serve it via USB drives? Uh, what what is exactly the means that, that we are using, and how we create the links uh, after sharing them uh, with other research outputs? And uh, during module two, I think it was, we saw how these links can be created. Oops, sorry. And then during uh, access uh, of the data, we have to, again, know, um, uh, let people know how they can access our data if there are um, embargoes, and embargoes uh, that apply, uh, if there are restrictions, like restrictions, so they cannot um, have access, if there are access controls in place, like uh, what are the restrictions, for example, do, do we, can, can we immediately, um, can we immediately provide access or do we have to pay attention to uh, other policies um, uh, and see um, what are the, the, the conditions um, that might restrict parts of the axis. And here you can also see uh, a, very, a very nice uh, table from the UK Data Service, where you see going from open to control data, open safeguard control data, what are the different levels and conditions, levels of access and conditions that, um, that uh, differentiate them. Uh, so for open data, for example, we have the requirement is that we have a suitable, uh, that it's suitable, data are suitable for fully anonymized data uh, or data with agreement to publish personal details. They are accessible without user registration and they are, um, uh, they can be accessed uh, because they have an open license uh, in place. Uh, and uh, on the contrary, controlled data uh, they are too detailed, confidential, or sensitive uh, to to download, so they, they can they can be downloaded. There is uh, they are accessible to authenticated users only using secure remote access or secure on-site room, and uh, it requires user accreditation and registration for training and approval by data access committee. Uh, so you, we understand the different uh, levels and the in-between uh, barriers. To, to accessing data. For data reuse, we have uh, the license uh, tool. Li licensing is a very good tool uh, for that as it uh, provides the conditions and uh, under which uh, other people um, can, can reuse our data. And this is the, the standardized uh, machine actionable machine readable, sorry, uh, licensing uh, schema of uh, Creative Commons. Uh, most of you are already aware of that. And uh, we, we uh, you know, we, we touched upon that in the previous uh, module. Um, licenses helps us understand how we can, um, how we can attribute, acknowledge the work of others, uh, and if it's required to do so, 
uh, when we are using their data and our, when others are using our data, if they should uh, attribute, uh, acknowledge our uh, work, how to share them, uh, if it's non-commercial, non-derivative, so on. I'm not going to go to the, into much detail because we saw that. Uh, and also uh, citations are part of uh, the step of data reuse because um, uh, if, if they're open citations in particular, uh, in particular uh, we get more credits uh, when we are reusing um, data and uh, it specifies, uh, we need to specify uh, the data citation. Is it something can... Okay. So moving on to DMPs, uh, as we, uh, we we revisited some of the concepts that we saw in module one and two, but on a different perspective, on the perspective of research data management uh, lifecycle. So we'll see uh, how this all boils down to DMPs, data management plans. And what is a DMP? Uh, I'm not sure uh, how many of you have heard, have heard probably all of you, but I don't know how many of you have or actually used a tool or actually created from scratch a data management plan. Um, I, would, I would like to know uh, later. Um, so a data management plan is a document. It's a text document, uh, essentially. It's a deliverable uh, in the context of a project and it's a living document, meaning that we uh, have to um, provide the, the DMP, the data management plan, this document in the beginning of the research. And then as research uh, follows and evolves, we might have more data, we might have changes and modifications um, applied to the data. These we uh, go and fix in the data management plan, we update it. Uh, and that's why it's called living document because uh, it's open to uh, updates and it's open new, to new versions uh, of um, of our data uh, and we 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 can describe uh, the evolution of our data on uh, on the document um, yes we describe all the different uh, steps that uh, were that are involved in nurse data management including costs and including uh, the different people uh, that have been involved in um, performing data management activities. What is not a DMP is it's not a research assessment method. It is not. You, 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 um, you will not be, uh, your research won't be um, assessed by your DMP. Oops. Uh, what the, what data does it cover? I mean, we pretty much, uh, again, this is a revision, uh, scientific data. So a data management plan covers scientific data and metadata, but only those that we have used to very, and, and we have used and are useful to others to verify and validate the conclusions that we have uh, written in a paper. So they are linked to uh, our conclusions uh, uh, in, in this paper, uh, but also uh, we have, oh, I say it here, uh, we also include other raw or structured data and metadata, uh, and we provide uh, guidelines for how they can be reproduced uh, from others, because uh, we might, we, we might didn't have um, the time or the orientation of the project was not um, relevant. For, for those data, but other disciplines might um, find them useful. Um, so we, we include also other types of metadata not directly linked to um, publications. Um, and what data uh, it covers? Uh, those that do not infringe copyright, of course, because we cannot uh, 
uh, use them and they, that they are uh, non-personal uh, and or sensitive in content and meaning not those that we can already anonymize or pseudo anonymize and get away with but those that um, that we that we cannot so for this uh, these two in particular we uh, set access restrictions and we we describe them uh, in the data management plan um, and restrictions in access are described in in advance in the data management plan uh, it, it's good if if we have that uh, at, at the very primary uh, and early stage of our data management plan um, so the statement for that when is it delivered uh, it's delivered at the proposal stage. It's encouraged, but it's not necessary that you that you that you do that. Um, it, it's a bonus if you do when you are um, submitting your proposal to have just one page of how I'm planning to uh, manage my data, what kind of data I'm planning to create, collect. I foresee that I will create, collect standards that um, I have in mind using. Um, and for, to who this will be available and um, where I will preserve them. Very basic information just to uh, showcase uh, that I am aware of all the different processes involved and I will, um, I will um, follow them and I will follow the best practices uh, and produce quality data. But it's mandatory uh, uh, during the project stage. Uh, and I don't know, Ahmad, um, based on the policy that you have, uh, at which stage will um, just era affiliated institutions uh, receiving funding will be um, um, tasked to, to, to give you the DMP? So for uh... For the next call, so starting from the call that we will open in uh, in a few days, um, the the DMP would have to be submitted uh, within three months of the project start. Um, why did we say three months? Uh, that's because it coincides with the with the deadline for providing the consortium agreement as well. So we have decided to somehow align all the deadlines to make it simple for, for the projects. Um, I think in the future, the, the tendency is to, to have the DMP submitted before the beginning of the project. Since we believe that it's part of the project planning. So in fact, one could even in principle ask for a DMP even with the project submission. Because it, it, I think it, it's part of the thought about how the data of the project is going to be managed, at least at, at, in a, in a, as a, in a planning phase. But for the moment, for the next call, um, it will be within three months. For the call 2019 that has been evaluated and for which project will start soon, um, we simply ask uh, the DMP to be submitted within uh, within the first year without strict restrictions. Okay. Okay, good to know. Thank you. And yes, so during the project stage, uh, three months or uh, first year, uh, as Ahmad mentioned, um, you can submit uh, the first version and then keep updating, uh, make revisions uh, until the end the end of the project where you have to submit the, the final version uh, the more co coherent and more com uh, more complete so who needs dmps uh, i think uh, it's it's linked to what we've already uh, mentioned in the beginning uh, organization needs dmps to track are in the outputs and then incurring bindings to them to identify the consumed data implications and to facilitate a research and development via data discovery and sharing. Um, so basically to, to uh, facilitate the, um, the um, research development. 
uh, funders to track direct and indirect products and the impact of funding uh, and know where exactly to uh, allocate resources, uh, which areas need to be allocated more resources, more resources or less, and to identify or refine strategies uh, with respect to research and data production, sharing, reuse, and so on, uh, in order to, again, uh, uh, further ac and accelerate science uh, uh, produced uh, within their uh, framework. For researchers, um, they, uh, can, they need the DMPs to facilitate and even enforce, enforce data referencing um, and also to, uh, again, uh, help uh, and contribute, not help, contribute to uh, reproducibility and reusability of data which accelerate science and of course open science needs DMPs to promote fairness, fairness of data and interdisciplinary research. Um, who is involved in DMPs? Uh, everyone is involved in DMPs from funders that define the rules, from organizations and policy offices that uh, define policies, Projects, uh, project or projects managers uh, that apply uh, the policies uh, and align to um, that, uh, that align their project policies to the organizational or funding policies, the data managers that manage the data management plan, uh, and the researchers who manage their data uh, and their, they describe their data sets and are attributed by uh, data sets. So overall, the value is that uh, that we see uh, is that it increases data management plans, increase quality of research, and therefore uh, our prestige as organizations and and, and, and um, integrity as researchers. To ensure that research, uh, it, it ensures that research outputs, uh, including data in particular, are findable by everyone, available to people, uh, uh, consumable and uh, exploitable by others, and to avoid duplications of same research concepts uh, and, and ensure that uh, research um, evolves. To understand strengths and weaknesses. Uh, example, what discipline uh, has more results, uh, if data are described based on DMP requirements and so on. Uh, this, this helps us understand, um, we understand how research data management uh, activities are perceived from uh, the community and we, we can, uh, we can uh, provide, we can act, uh, timely act on them and provide um, solutions uh, to, and to ensure research integrity and excellence of researchers. Yeah, I think Albert mentioned. Is there a question? I think. Um, yes, um, it's about uh, the sharing of the presentation. But yes, we provide. We will provide a link uh, in uh, to you. Um, where you will find all the, the information. Mm -hmm. and there is also a raised hand that I see now, Manuel, ah. okay. um, who also is um, uh, writing the duplication of research designs. So maybe, Manuel, do you want to... Um, yeah, maybe we can have... Yeah, I can open your mic so you can... Um, you can share with us your thought we can hear you now hello hello can yes. you hear me yes yes uh, the question is about the uh, the previous slide previous slide about the duplication of research this to avoid the duplication of, so to avoid the duplications of same research concept i think is uh well most people is doing uh, more or less repeating experiments and kind of this kind of things that mm -hmm. lead to new data so this kind of uh, this line opens the the way to copyright to introduce some copyright in the design of the research experiments 
So I think this is kind of um, maybe controversial uh, issue. So if uh, I cannot uh, duplicate uh, research designs, uh, things, uh, life is uh, quite different from now. So this is my, my concern in this, in this slide. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I will mute, now I will mute my, my microphone. Okay. Yes, to avoid duplications of same research concepts, uh, maybe uh, I didn't write it correctly. Uh, we, we don't mean that uh, you, you, you are not allowed or we try to limit, let's say, your possibilities to um, make, uh, perform the same uh, research method and you know, follow the same paths again. Uh, it's not that, it's more on the aspect that um, if you, we, we see that there is um, many times uh, we see that the very similar projects uh, receive funding, let's say, for example, for the same uh, um, to have the same uh, same result. Um. Yeah, the problem, the problem is that precisely in some areas of science, mostly in medicine and uh, bio, bioscience, uh, this duplication, this uh, uh, doing, some people doing or many people doing the same thing is, is very important because it's the way to uh, ratify, to confirm or falsify. Uh, the assertions, and in this uh, situation of pandemic that we are living, I think that we must be very, very conscious of this value of uh, yeah, multiple uh, assessment of the scientific tool. So I think this this uh, uh, forbidding to do the same thing and this kind of things is uh, can be quite uh, controversial at least. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's different duplicating it, and it's different uh, as I understand uh, what I understand what you're saying. It's um, re reproducing and repeating. So it, it goes more into repeatability, replicability and reproducibility rather than duplicating, which has um, different uh, implications. So um, I don't know if Emma wants to... Yeah, I was thinking that these has to deal with the uh, um, authorship also, um, and also of, uh, um, how to say, do not duplicate the funding for, for, for the same research. Does it make sense uh, to Manuel? So one thing is, is replicating, extending, uh, um, reproducing, as you said, in, in some specific context. And one other is asking for money to do something that has already been done. Yeah, and of course this varies, um, this is a, a fair uh, argument because it varies to different disciplines and to and to different, uh, okay, what is this? We have created it. Oh, sorry, it's- Yeah, that, that's me responding to, yes. Mm -hmm. I was responding to a user that was asking for where they can okay. find materials. But there, There is a thin line between duplication mm -hmm. and uh, which has negative impact and uh, replicability, reproducibility and uh, repeatability, which has, of course, positive impact. And this is what we, we, we want. Um, yeah, I guess this is more also from the funder point of view, right? Avoid uh, refunding the same uh, research. Yes. I don't know if, Manuel, you want to add anything to this? Um, no, no, just to, to raise the, my, yeah. my concern no. about... Yes. One of the things is uh, copywriting the, the research uh, 
uh, design. So if somebody has the power to say uh, that uh, this design is mine and, and no other can, no other people can do uh, the same uh, uh, research uh, design. This is like a meta copyright of, uh, of data. And it's, uh, I think, uh, well, it's not uh, <laughs> probably not the place now to, to discuss that, but it's just uh, uh, yeah, commenting on my concern of, of that. I think that the funder, the, the, the European Commission, uh, or they, they have to have this thing uh, very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, for adding uh, your your view to the conversation. No, okay. it's it's important. It's a, yes, it's true that it's a very thin line. Okay, uh, and then, yes, moving on to Argos. So we'll uh, see how uh, we can create a DMP in, in Argos. Not, not yet. We'll see what Argos stands for and how it works, what are the key features that it has, and then we'll see yeah, in practice how it works. Um, so Argos. Argos is the data management planning tool of OpenAir. And it was developed, it's based on an open source uh, software, uh, the OpenDMP software, which was co-developed uh, with the UDAT, the European Data uh, Services and Opener. Uh, and it's, uh, again, I said open source, it's configurable and extensible, so uh, people can, uh, can take them and install it in their organization and configure uh, different uh, services. Uh, on top of that, I, uh, integrate different services and link different services that they have in the organization on top of that. And also it's extensible, uh, meaning that uh, everyone, even you as researchers, if you have an interest in uh, uh, data management planning uh, and risk data management in particular, you can, um, uh, you can push uh, your, um, your, um, your features that you might have in our GitLab page and we can, um, update and um, um, create new versions of this of the software based on your uh, feedback and your community contributions and based on that software we we, we took it and we uh, integrated all the services that opener has uh, and underlying in their underlying services uh, and we created Argos, uh, which is accessible uh, in if you go to argos.opener.eu. Um, and this is uh, what a DMP lifecycle it looks like in uh, Argos. It starts with creating our DMP. So uh, we we create our DMP our DMP with Argos. Uh, it goes to uh, a draft status, so our, our DMP is in draft status where we can um, can't, we can delete it, we can uh, further modify it and, and edit it uh, and, and add more things on top. And then we, once we're ready, we um, have to uh, choose if we want to validate it um, and when we're ready to validate it because we have to validate it. First step of validation means that we, um, the system checks that all the input that we have in, uh, we have uh, uh, added in the in the system is uh, all the mandated fields in, that we have uh, added in the in the system are correct, so that, that are true. They, they there are, there is input for these mandated fields. Uh, and similarly for the false, uh, it, it ignores like those that are not mandatory fields. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if they have been complete or not. And once this validation has um, taken place, uh, then uh, the, the, um, the DMP is again in its draft mode, but it, it can then uh, further um, move to finalization. Uh, and to a more stable, let's say, um, status, which is the finalized status. And by doing that, uh, you cannot go back and delete it. Uh, you have, um, you, have a, a, you know, a, a stable version that we are working on. And once you finalize uh, your uh, DMP, then you have two different um, 
options, either to, to keep it and publish it in our data, in our data collection and data, database collection, or to issue a DOI uh, by publishing it in Zenodo. We have integrated Zenodo. So it's easy after you finish writing your DMP to click on the button and uh, upload the deposit, uh, your uh, version uh, of either your DMP in Zenodo. And by doing that, you get a DOI uh, automatically. Um, and then you, you, your, your DMP uh, gets also um, the leaves uh, in, the, in the environment of Zenodo. And it's, it can be uh, further um, shared with, with other people. It can be, um, it can be, uh, it has the versioning, it uses the versioning mechanisms, uh, mechanism of Zenodo. So if you uh, update it, uh, let's say that you are publishing a DMP uh, in the first three months of the project. Of course, um, it's, it's not the final uh, version of the DMP. So things change, you modify, you update, uh, specific aspects, and then you publish it again. Uh, the, the, the republication of your DMP will uh, be a new version of the first DMP uh, that you So we support uh, a versioning of your DMPs and uh, that, that, that they exist as living documents in our platform uh, as well. Um, Yes, uh, this is what it is. And the key features that it has is, um, which uh, makes it, uh, you know, different from, from other tools, is that it helps uh, differentiate DMPs from data sets. So DMPs can have more than one description of data sets, meaning that you will see that Argos has two different editors, a DMP editor and a data set editor. The DMP editor holds all the metadata and, and, and all the data, uh, all, all the information uh, about a, a project, like from basic metadata that have to do with uh, the scope of the, why the DMP is created, uh, who is the author of the DMP, uh, who, uh, what is the project uh, that the DMP is created for, uh, the grant ID um, that is created for, again, the links between the, the grant ID and so on. These are the basic metadata, and uh, it also has the data set metadata. So um, all this uh, information that has to do with open and fair principles that have been applied on the data, uh, like uh, what kind of metadata standards have been used, in which repository I can find the data set, and so on. Um, so the DMP has all this information, but the flexibility that is provided in Argos is with a data set editor, which you can use at any time, uh, any given time, and add new data sets in existing DMPs. So um, this helps with uh, reusing your descriptions of your data sets within the Argos environment, because you might be reusing the data for a different project, for a different project and it's easier for you to copy uh, the description and paste it on the new DMP that you're creating for, for that project. Um, so it helps uh, reusability of the descriptions as well and repurpose of, of descriptions as well. Plus, um, no, I will not go through that again. Uh, plus, uh, it, it's, it's, and another thing that is important is that um, you can describe as many data sets as you want from the from choosing the data set editor at any time uh, and describe them um, and, and describe not have all the information uh, at, at the same place so make it easier for you and for the other researchers to understand exactly what type of data uh, is described here and what is the exact metadata standard for this type of data that I will need? Uh, and they, it, it has been used to, to describe this data and I will need to understand it. And what is the data repository that this specific data is um, in? 
so I can uh, go uh, and download it and use it in my own research, rather than having all of this information together, like all the different data types together, uh, and, and it makes it difficult to, to repurpose and re reproduce, find which is the, uh, the correct um, uh, mapping of information between data types, metadata, repositories, and so on. A DMP can contain more than one uh, templates, uh, but this I don't think uh, you will need for just era uh, projects, uh, but maybe you do. Um, meaning that uh, when you create, when you first create a data management plan, you can select up to what uh, infinite, actually infinite templates to use per DMP. Uh, and this is very handy because uh, you might be working for a, a very big project like, um, I don't know, like um, an international funded project uh, that uh, receives uh, funding from uh, many resources. And some of those um, funders require you to uh, write a DMP, like the NHS, the, the um, Yes, the NIH, uh, let's say in the, in the US, the European Commission here, and these are big funders, they want you to create two different DMPs, let's say. Uh, you can, uh, from the beginning, select those two templates and continue working uh, with, with them. And um, you can easily select Opener and EOSC resources. We use APIs. I'm sure that you're familiar uh, with uh, with what uh, what the REST API is, um, based on uh, you know that this is an uh, this just there is an ICT uh, oriented consortium. So uh, we use uh, APIs um, to facilitate uh, completion of uh, DMPs, and it's easier for you to select something and also um, it's easier for us to um, to help you make the links with other outputs later. And we use Opener and EOS uh, API for that, you will see in a minute. Uh, key features, other key features is uh, that it supports collaborative writing, so you can manage workload with your colleagues. Uh, you can add as many uh, people as you want to, to work with you and you can divide, you know, uh, uh, tasks amongst you. Like, let's say that I create a DMP and I want data set uh, one to be described by uh, John, data set two to be described by Maria uh, and so on. So uh, you, can, um, you can manage workload like this class. Uh, supports, uh, Argo supports exports in JSON format. Uh, we integrate, we, we have applied a, a, a world common standard for that, the RDA common standard for DMPs, um, which uh, really helps uh, in the sense that uh, it, it allows you uh, to, um, to use RDA compatible um, platforms. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> It allows you to use other RDA, even, even uh, on the occasion that you're using different uh, platform, which is RDA compatible, uh, you can, uh, without, uh, in a seamless way, and without losing any vital information, you can download uh, your uh, DMP and upload it in another RDA uh, compatible platform and don't miss uh, any vital information, continue work as you would do. Uh, for example, when you're working in, the, in a text editor, like let's say I work uh, a deliverable, I have a deliverable that I'm working on my OneDrive, uh, and then I download it and I upload it uh, on, uh, I don't know, like a Google Drive or something, um, Microsoft, I, I don't know. Uh, so in, I don't, you see that if I do that, I don't, you, I don't miss any vital information. So this is um, the concept that is applied for DMP tools, and that we have also um, that we have also followed here. Um, and 
it also provides, uh, I, I, I said that we, we integrate it's an auto for publishing DMPs. So we provide DOIs, we mint DOIs from Zenodo. Uh, so your uh, outputs uh, get, uh, can get uh, cited and can also be um, uh, findable and accessible at any, at any time. Um, yes, we also provide versioning. Sorry, I see something clicking here. Emma? Ali, yes, there is, um, Manuel wants to um, ask a question. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Manuel, you can just, yes, you can open yeah, your okay. Yeah, the thing is, uh, well, we have experience with uh, publishing and getting uh, a plagiarism the detection ways and these kind of things using authenticate or other things. Mm -hmm. So the question is if uh, DMP becomes a uh, published uh, document with a DOI, then uh, maybe, uh, well, uh, I don't know if uh, Argos will integrate this plagiarism detection or uh, at some point, somebody will be applying this plagiarism uh, detection tools. The problem is that to avoid plagiarism, you must uh, be changing things. So you must be writing the same thing in very different ways. So this, this will be, I, I fear that will be a kind of uh, source of confusion in the future. I don't... Uh, so for me, for me, it's, yeah, mm. it, can be, it can be very because for the same experiment or, or the same uh, data management process, you will be uh, obliged obliged to do very very different uh, writings so, in order to avoid plagiarism. So I think this this kind of very basic uh, tools of research must be clearly. Uh, assume as a standard and then uh, out of this plagiarism and detection uh, craziness. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my, my, so my question is if Argos will be integrating this kind of tools or not, because it's, uh, I think it's uh, quite feasible. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that the DMPs do not uh, fully uh, care about the text that you have written like you would like a publication cares in that aspect uh, but uh, it, it focuses more on whether you have uh, addressed specific aspects uh, of the research data management life cycle uh, by uh, when when writing your data management plan uh, like and and this cannot be Plagiar can, cannot undergo uh, plagiarism because it differs. Um, sometimes, yes, it, it's the same. Like some some people, uh, it's true that we we most majority of the people that uh, are uh, having repositories, for example, they use data site uh, uh, standard. Uh, this is not. If we train Argos to see this as pla as plagiarism, uh, it won't have um, it, it will have negative effects. This is not what we want here. We just want to see uh, the, the processes that have been followed and how uh, open and fair have been applied uh, during the project. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for your answer. Okay. Okay, but for the publication, yes, if uh, it, 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 it's different. Yeah, it's also uh, when when you publish um, your your DMP, if you are giving an open access to the document, you can also uh, you have to apply a license, and uh, so if someone uh, will how to say uh, use parts of your DMP, can cite it. Mm -hmm, through exactly. the DOI, but it's more of a technical document. So uh, as Ellie was saying, uh, if you are listing the same uh, standards, this does not uh, fall into the plagiarism, rather coping uh, 
parts of the text of the document uh, would, but um, yes, uh, it's like every other piece of, uh, uh, every other papers. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I like this uh, this uh, interaction because it really helps to uh, to avoid uh, you know this it's to better understand uh, the concepts. Uh, okay, so let's see how um, how Argos uh, is um, is enhanced uh, and why what's the value behind it um so here you can see i don't remember if you talked about that emma but here you can see the research graph the open air research graph which is a, a scientific knowledge graph uh, with uh, including all uh, open access all available open access information uh, from mostly from europe but also from uh, different other regions of the world uh, who collaborate with Opener, uh, and we see there, and we can identify all the, we can explore all the uh, wealth of information contained in in that graph, and we can create entities, and these are the entities currently uh, available in the graph. Uh, you have uh, the research outputs that are in open access, organizations linked and, and links out entities and links linked to organizations, linked to communities, to projects, funding, uh, funding meaning grant ideas, funders, but also what are the sources that help uh, with, um, um, with uh, enhancing those products. Uh, what, what types of products are they? Publication data software, uh, and different uh, other uh, categorizations. And here uh, in, this, uh, in, in this graph and this wealth of information, we have worked with research groups, with research graph to uh, also create a DMP entity. So it's easier for us to exploit DMPs and understand how they evolve in time uh, and find all, uh, find again, as I mentioned uh, in, in previous slides, uh, what, what is, what are the areas that we have to act on so that we um, uh, so that we uh, better support uh, research practice and researchers, individual researchers and research communities uh, as uh, as well. So uh, by by creating these entities, we also try to create links with the projects and the data again for the same reason to to understand um, uh, research data management trends. Uh, and, and practices. Um, okay, and then we also integrate other services that Opener has. I won't go into much detail. Uh, so that, like Explore, for example, we we work with them so that we make the MPs ex um, we expose the MPs and we make them searchable. Um, when monitor, we see how many uh, DMPs um, um, are. Um, um, are uh, included in the in the graph. Uh, we see the usage uh, of, of the DMPs by others uh, and develop. We use APIs to, as I said, uh, make uh, facilitate the, the writing process for researchers. We use provide where we uh, try to um, make links with repository managers uh, and inform them, send them notifications when um, when someone mentions in their DMP, uh, in, in, yes, when someone from uh, creating an Argos DMP mentions that I'm planning to deposit my data in this repository, then notifications are sent to, uh, man to repository managers so that they are aware and they can uh, plan uh, accordingly. Um, Yes, we use a nodal. This helps us publish uh, our DMPs uh, in an open, fair manner. And uh, we also we are very lucky to be collaborating with uh, people that work uh, in open air. Like these are uh, national open access desks, NOADs. They are called NOADs in more than 35, uh, 36. I don't know. I, I've lost count. In many countries in Europe, and they they uh, they are. Um, their role is to support 
uh, open, uh, open science and research data management in their countries. Uh, in many ways, technical um, uh, information and educational and so on. And by 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 do by by having them uh, and actually through their contribution, we were able to uh, translate the Argos in in many languages. And some you, you won't be able to see because it's still in a draft uh, in a, a mode. But uh, we are now in. Yeah, we have translated Argos in 10 different uh, languages. And this uh, hopefully, uh, because we realize that it's easier for some researchers to uh, see uh, and read uh, and understand, comprehend better, they comprehend better um, things that are uh, expressed in their language. Um, and also uh, we integrate uh, the open science primers and all the different resources so Opener is, uh, operates for more than 10 years now, and you can imagine how much uh, resource, uh, yes, how many resources uh, they, they have, uh, the, the network has uh, produced. So we integrate these um, resources as well to, to uh, make uh, the process uh, easier uh, for researchers. And having said that, I think it's the time to have the demo. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I won't use the production now because we don't have, we are currently testing the Chist Era template in Argo. So we have that only in uh, our um, beta environment, the test environment. But uh, you, you will be able in, by the end of the year, I think, yes, uh, that, that's the, the plan by the end of the year. Uh, so. After, after Christmas, log in to argos.opener.eu and you will be able to see uh, and test the um, uh, and test the um, uh, Argos, uh, the Digisterra template in Argos. So what I want to do now is go to the Devel, which is our development platform, and show you how this looks in practice and create a DMP with you. Here is the first page, the home page. You can see, you can learn a um, few things. Ali, we yes. see still your presentation. Uh, okay, because- uh, Yeah, because you're the sharing thing. the other screen probably. Okay, but now I don't see, oh, new sir. Okay, is this that one? You see now that I'm yes. Now we see it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sorry. Uh, all right. Um, so yes, this is the the homepage. Uh, you can you, know, you you have um, you can get informed about resources, um, the roadmap. You can contact us from here. Uh, then you can uh, have a look at what are the features and what is there for different uh, stakeholders, uh, the different uh, users, uh, types of users that Argos uh, targets. And uh, if you want to use Argos in your own organization, this is the uh, co-branding section for you. Um, you can uh, choose, there are two ways to log in, start your DMP or login. Let's say that I want to log in. And as you can see, there are many ways uh, to log in via academia, um, by academia AIs or uh, commercial uh, providers, um, social media providers, actually, sorry. Uh, for, for which, if you see in our statement here, uh, terms of service, uh, you, you can understand how we are using those data. Basically, the only thing that we are doing uh, for, for these providers is, <clears throat> sorry, uh, get the, the email and, uh, and nothing else, email and name. Um, okay, so I was, oh, I logged in again. Okay, logged out again. So here I'm logged in, uh, I'm not logged in, and now I choose which uh, way I want to log in. Um, and let's say I want to use, um, 
I will use Google because I know that it will be easier for me. But you can use uh, any, any other option. Okay. Um, you cannot, I, I see also, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the chat as well. You cannot use your email directly. No, we do not, um, we do not have sign up uh, process, but we have sign in uh, only. And you, you use uh, the email that you have used for this provider that you will select. This is not a good privacy practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we do not provide. There is a. There is a. What to say? There is. There are specific conditions of how developers can use uh, those um, those providers. And the only thing that we are getting is uh, name and email. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So this is uh, how it looks like. So as you can see here, you can see the personal usage. I have created lots of DMPs, 38. Uh, in my DMPs, I have 33 uh, data sets that I'm describing. And the the the, the grants um, the grants uh, for the DMPs are 30, uh, 30 grants. Um, so uh, this is my uh, yes. So this is my dashboard. Uh, I would like. So if you if if you if you're a new user, you see zeros here because you will be a new user, and you will have a tour guide option so to, to guide you to how to use the tool uh, but as i said i've already uh, used it so you you're viewing um what someone that has created at least one dmp views and this is the dashboard uh, I'm, I'm in the dashboard i can see in my dashboard i can see um the data sets that i have created uh, I have described, sorry, the DMPs that are storing those data sets, uh, the, the data set descriptions, and uh, so all my activity can be viewed in my dashboard. I can select only to view my DMPs from my DMPs. I can view only my data sets from my data sets. And I can also view what is publicly out there. So what other people have done uh, for me to get inspiration uh, and, and yes, consult before uh, I, or during I am writing my data management plan. So these are the public DMPs and these are the public data set descriptions. Okay. Uh, so let's say that I want to now uh, add my, uh, create my data management plan. I click on start new DMP from here and I have the option to either import the file, uh, which is according to, it's, it's a JSON file that is uh, following the RDA, um, the RDA standard, or uh, I can start uh, a wizard from scratch. Since I don't have something uh, ready uh, as JSON, and I'm starting this from scratch, I will click Start Wizard, okay? And these are the basic metadata that I mentioned in my, in my presentation that it wants me to add. Title of DMP would be DMP for, uh, I don't know, just era. The description, uh, so you, you provide a, a title uh, that is not just a data management plan. It, it has few, uh, few information that can, uh, you know, that can separate uh, your data management plan from others. It, it's easier for finding, uh, finding your data management plan afterwards. Uh, description, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, 
I am um, I am creating project X creates this MP or da, 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 I don't know what's the, the purpose behind the create the creation of DMP. Uh, language, what's the language that my DMP is using? So um, it will be English. What is the visibility? So here I get to choose it, it, how I want it to be shared in Argos. If it's going to be a public, it will be under public DMPs here, if I click public. And if I, I keep restricted, which is the default, uh, when you start your DMP, it means that you and all the people that you will share your DMP with uh, have access for now. This can be changed at any time. So when we're ready, we can uh, publicize it. Uh, researchers, who are the people that uh, are um, that are uh, contributors in, in this, people that the data sets uh, are associated with, uh, and people that have um, uh, that are uh, co-authors co of this DMP. So let's say that uh, it's uh, it's me, and it's also I can if I don't find it, I can search by a, uh, I can search by ORCID ID. But if someone doesn't have an ORCID, I can insert manually. Let's say, and these are the people that are working for the DMP, the organizations. Um, let's say who are the partners. Um, I can select. We we take this information. This is the, the API of Opener that we're using. Um, And I can select all the okay, all the uh, different partners. Um, okay, let's say that I want these two. And uh, here I see that I, I am the main contact. So wh whoever creates the DMP, the whole DMP first is the manager, the DMP manager, meaning that he will be the person to be contacted afterwards um, in revisions and after the project ends. So next, after I have added this basic metadata, I get to describe the funding organizations that I'm creating the DMP for. Uh, I can search uh, Justera. I can have Chistera. Um, I have have added Chistera manually because it's not in Opener yet, but uh, this will change uh, in two or three months. So you will be able to find it uh, in the list. The grants that um, uh, um, that that are. The, the grants of Chist era that I uh, that I want to describe uh, and create the DMP for. Um, so this is a, an example. Uh, and uh, yes, that that doesn't that that's something that uh, it's not for all projects. It's only for projects that receive multiple grants. So. Uh, let's say that my project doesn't uh, receive multiple grants, so I'm moving on to the next. Um, then I, I'm, I'm still in the, in the DMP editor, so I get to uh, provide a license of how I would like others to reuse my DMP. Uh, let's say that I don't have any issues, so I want to have a Creative Commons um, for, let's say. So this is how others can reuse my DMP and select a template to describe my data. There is a whole collection of templates that we have here and I want Cistera, this is a Cistera um, uh, project. And let's start. Uh, so now you see that uh, the, the it's the same environment, but with different different colors. This means that I'm in the data set. So I'm now describing the data sets itself. 
uh, I provide, I will provide uh, the data set name. So it's, it's good if, if the title of the data set uh, correlates with the exact title of the data set that uh, I will upload later uh, somewhere so that we don't confuse, we don't, it's easier for us to find it in, in you know, as researchers uh, to find our own data set and understand um, where the description is. Uh, let's, oops. let's say that I want to describe data set one. Now that's, that's the, that's the name of the data set that I want to describe. Um, I'm providing a brief description of uh, why I'm creating the data set. Um, and I can add tags for this data set, like data. Um, I don't know um, what, what, what tags you would like to add. And uh, again, I can select the template that I want and start my process. So just add a template and uh, let me, sorry, I have a, a laptop which is tiny. So <laughs> I'm, I have to zoom out. Um, okay, is it, I think it's better for you. So the Chist era um, template has, um, let's see, for now has seven um, sections, data description and collection, documentation, data quality, storage and backup during the research process, legal and ethical requirements, codes of contact, data sharing and long-term long preservation, data management responsibilities and resources and reusable data. Do I see something here? Yes, uh, if you are using, sorry, I'm also looking at my uh, at the, in, the, in the chat. Sister uh, templates are not present at the moment. Is it normal? Will it be updated? Yes, because now I'm using the test environment. Once we finalize uh, everything and, and we, we have a stable version of this Chistera template, everything will be up on argos.opener.eu uh, and this will happen by end of the year. So in this, after your vacation, your, your Christmas vacation, you will be able to uh, find it yourself and, uh, and play around. Um, okay, so in the data description, these are the things that um, let me see. Okay. Uh, so, um, in the data description and collection, these are the two options uh, that you, uh, the, the two questions. So, first is explain which methodologies or software will be used if new data are collected or produced. Uh, we use uh, the uh, EOSC API here. So, um, uh, let's say that I want uh, to use this service, for example, um, to collect my data uh, and uh, methodologies is, I don't know. Um, description about methodologies. And I have to explain how data provenance will be documented, like data provenance uh, will be uh, provided via the next tool. I don't know if it's tied to a tool or it, what, what you're, how you're going to, um, to do that. What data, for example, what kind of formats and volumes uh, you will uh, you you will um, describe? Is it sample or specimen data, observational, experimental, simulation, derived, reference, uh, or canonical, or other? Uh, let's say that for that particular data set, it's a three D models that I'm, I, I am describing. 
and give details on the data format. Again, I can choose from those um, from those options, and I choose models 3D statistical since uh, this is the type uh, I'm dealing with. Um, then I can justify the the use of certain formats, like why I have I have used this uh, this particular. Uh, format. Um, I don't know how many of you or if any of you actually is uh, working on that area with 3D models. Um, but as in many cases, there are closed and open formats. So let's say that there are some closed formats um, are SDL or OBJ, and I try to avoid them and prefer uh, open formats. So GLB, let's say, will be preferred because it's open, for example, and provides um, uh, um, give details. Um, I, similarly, I can uh, write that I, I have described uh, uh, that, that I am describing data that are in in a um, data uh, that are in a closed format, but I can let uh, everyone know uh, which data these are. Give details on uh, the sorry. The, the give details on the volumes of the data. So this data set, uh, how um, how this data set translates to bytes. Let's say that it's I don't know. Let's say that it's very big terabyte. And that's uh, that I have successfully uh, answered uh, all questions from the first um, from the first section. Moving on, so the first section was about data description and collection. Uh, moving on to documentation and data quality, I have to um, to indicate how metadata, if, if I have used any metadata, what metadata uh, these are, if I use any standards. Um, and one of the questions is to indicate which metadata will be provided to help others identify and discover the data. Will it be structural, administrative, descriptive? I will add descriptive here uh, just to describe. I will use metadata to describe my data set. So indicative, uh, indicate which metadata standards. So which is the standard that I will use uh, to describe uh, the data with, uh, let's say that I want um, the common information model. I will use all the fields that are um, included in this model. And if I cannot find it, of course, I can al always uh, add things manually. Then I have to indicate how the data will be organized during the project. Uh, meaning if there are any conventions, version controls for those structures, so that uh, I communicate how um, oops, I communicate to people that will be possibly potentially reusing my data how uh, they can um, how they can read them uh, how they can understand them like let's say for example that uh, I have a type of uh, <coughs> sorry variables and I have the prefix and then I have the example. This depends uh, of course on uh, the conventions, the type of conventions that you're using. If it's code, if it's a convention, if we're talking about files and how you have uh, um, how you have how you are dealing with files for files, for example, you can say that uh, it will have the um, the structure will be uh, month, oops, sorry, year, uh, month, um, day. 
uh, underscore. Um, version for example, something like this, something like this so that people understand uh, how to search uh, your data sets and how to read them consider what other documentation is needed to enable reuse um, this may include information on the methodology used to collect the data analytical and procedural information definitions of variables units of measures and so on so if um, something uh, else is needed for people to um, in this documentation, you should also add it here. Other documentation. Example. Um, Consider how this information will be captured and where it will be recorded. Um, I have to, uh, it says, for example, in the database with links to its item, a readme text file, file headers, code books, or lab notebooks. So I can um, I can find, for example, oh no, notebooks. Uh, I can find notebooks if they are any. Uh, let's say that I want to use pan notebook. Um, and um, how this information will be captured and where it will be recorded. It will be recorded in the pan notebook and how uh, the information, this information. I can add more uh, details on my answer, right? What data quality control measures will be used? Uh, explain how the consistency and quality of data collection will be controlled and documented. Uh, I get to choose, um, I, and I can choose from one of these uh, pre, uh, pre, predefined answers or uh, add my own here and also specify my uh, selection. Let's say that I want to, um, I will use peer review. So I will have uh, someone peer review my data and I will have uh, repeated sample measurements. So this will validate uh, the quality of my data. Uh, the, there will be an external so I can specify how this is going to take place. And now I've finished the second, which is about documentation and data quality. So moving on to storage and backup during the research process. Um, how will data and metadata be stored and backed up during the research? Uh, here I have to describe where the data will be stored and backed up during research activities, so how often the backup uh, will be performed. I can select from a list of, uh, from, from a list of services. Let's say I want to storage. Um, let's say that my institution uses the EGI uh, online storage and this is where I also store my data and, and so, so backup is tied with this storage facility as well. Frequency I have to check with, uh, um, with um, the service, what, what, it's, uh, what are the policies of the service. So let's say that is per month. And if I cannot find it or if I want to specify things, I can also add more information here. How will data protection, like for here, for example, we could say what is the, the strategy that we are using, like I, the team is using the, team is the three, two, one complementary. The team uses the three, two, one backup rule and so on. Right, as we, as we saw during the presentation. 
How will data security and protection of sensitive data be taken care of during the research? So we're talking about sensitive data and um, data, data security and protection. Explain how the data will be recovered in the event of an incident. Um, um, retrieval uh, from, from um, compiled or backups, let's say, um, of uh, stored internal example. Uh, explain who will have access to the data during the research and how access to data is controlled, especially in collaborative partnerships. Um, let's say that um, our access is ensured during the project access during the project is open let's say all partners and um, become open to all once project ends Uh, and access is controlled through, I don't know, X mechanism. Might be encryption, might be passwords. Uh, okay. Uh, describe the main risks and how this will be managed. Uh, again, what are the risks if they if they are uh, if they are complementary risks? Um, okay, and explain which institutional data protection policies are in place. Here, I have to check the institutional data uh, protection policies and add the URL. So I have added the URL here. And I'm finished, uh, I've completed the fourth section. Fifth section has to do with legal and ethical requirements and codes of conduct. Uh, if I'm dealing with personal data, for example, personal data processed, how will compliance with legislation on personal data and on security be ensured? Uh, am I processing data? Yes or no? Um, no data. Uh, for example, and how I'm doing it. Explain whether there is a managed access uh, procedure in place for authorized use of personal data. So explain the process. Uh, and then we have how we all, how will other legal issues such as intellectual property rights and ownership be managed? What legislation is applicable? It's about data ownership. Uh, and um, an applicability, uh, who will be the owner of the data, uh, as uh, we saw in different modules, uh, the, the owner is the, 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 the affiliated organization that has developed the database. So let's say that it's um, something that Athena Research Center has done. Um, okay, and I can select also if 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 there's a researcher um, who owns the data, which is very um, it might not be the case. I can select the researcher and I can specify um, my answer if I want. I can add more information. Explain what access conditions will apply to the data. Uh, will it be open, mediated, embargoed, closed? Let's say that it's uh, mediated for this data set of 3D models. And I can explain uh, why and how uh, this is mediated. Yeah. Models. Uh, X, y. Right. 
Will the data be openly accessible or will there be access conditions? Uh, I can again select if it's going to be openly accessible or if there are access conditions that apply. Um, and in case of intellectual property rights, again, if, the, uh, if there are any intellectual property rights affected, yes or no. Third party, third party data descriptions, again, indicate whether there are any restrictions on the reuse of third party data, no restrictions. And uh, next is about ethical issues. What ethical issues and codes of conduct are there and how will they be taken into account? Uh, let's say that I have a, a commercial interests. Um, surrounding um, patents uh, and why and uh, how they will be taken into account and how we act how you will act and that's the fifth um, the fifth section completed about legal issues um, so moving on to the sixth, the next uh, section, how and when will data be shared? Are there uh, responsibilities? Uh, are there pos possible restrictions to data sharing or embargo reasons? Explain how the data will be discoverable and shared. Let's say that they will be deposited in the transport repository. Outline the plan for data preservation. Data will be preserved for as long, uh, for example, for as long as the repository uh, offers uh, as options, um, things like that. And from our side, the team will retain, for example, data for 10 years. Explain when the data will be made available. Uh, let's say that they will be made available uh, on next year, uh, in one year from now. And explain uh, why it will be one year after the project. I will skip it because I see that this is a bug and I will move on to that one. Will, in, will exclusive use of the data be claimed? Uh, yes or no? Um, indicate whether data sharing will be postponed or restricted. Again, uh, data sharing will be postponed or restricted. And why it will be restricted? Because Why uh, reasons indicate who will be able to use the data? Researchers, research communities, for example, uh, or or all the different people. Is it necessary to restrict access to certain communities or to apply a data sharing agreement? Yes, no. If, if you have to restrict it and if you have to uh, apply uh, um, sign an agreement with people. How will data for preservation be selected and where data will be preserved for long term? Indicate what data must uh, be retained or destroyed for contractual, legal, or regulatory purposes. And here uh, I can um, find the exact data uh, that I'm talking about probably after before uh, the project ends once I have the data set uh, and this we use Zenodo so whatever is currently in Zen or not only in Zenodo sorry what is what is currently in Opener what is currently Opener in, uh, in Opener Explore if you search data sets here uh, can you still see the new, the new tab Emma, can you still see my new tab here? 
I see the research outcomes. Is that what you want to show? Open access include publication. Okay, now I see. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, the research outcomes. Yes. So what yes. is indexed here? If I click, I want only research data. Then I can search for I don't know, models and get a data set. These are all data sets. Get a data set. Uh, but I can do it uh, from, from Argos. I don't have to go to open air. This is what I'm I'm trying to make the links now to, to you. So whatever you see here, uh, it's it's here as well. So 3D model, let's say, um, I don't know, let's, let's take this data set uh, that this, this can be destroyed uh, for contractual reasons because someone uh, won't don't want me to, to reuse it. Indicate how it will be decided what data to keep. Um, data to be kept. Um, here, uh, describe the data to be preserved long-term. What are those data? We're talking about uh, 3D models here. So this will be um, the same. Explain the foreseeable research uses and users for the data. Uh, who, who, how the data can be, um, how you foresee that the data are uh, are used. Um, okay. Indicate where the data will be deposited. And uh, so you can search from a repository that's. Uh, from the 17,000 plus repositories that are in open air, like let's say I want um, to know. Okay. Established repository proposed, yes or no? Uh, this question should have been on top, but okay. Indicate how the data will be shared. Will there be in a repository? Uh, or another mechanism, or request handed directly. Uh, indicate whether potential users need specific tools to access and reuse data. Uh, and here I can find uh, access tools, uh, let's say uh, that I will need, uh, I don't know, something to access. If I don't find it, I cannot add uh, a tool. Or if, if, there's not, if there are no tools and need to access and reuse my data, then I can add no uh, tools and access the data. OK. How will the application of the unique and persistent identifier to its data set be ensured? Um, explain how the data might be reused in other contexts uh, to share information, to make informed decisions, to develop a product, and indicate whether a persistent identifier for the data will be pursued. Yes, I will use a persistent identifier and I will use DOI because the um, the repository that I that I selected uses DOI. Okay, let me close this so you don't get uh, confused. And I'm moving on to the seventh um, um, section, which is who is responsible for data management, outline their role and responsibilities for data management and stewardship. Uh, I can select from, uh, find people with their DOIs uh, and also write that um, work on data analysis, that this person has worked on data analysis. I can add more people here. Uh, if I don't find people, I can add Emma. For example, data uh, access. So I can uh, add the people and their uh, role in data management here. Is it a collaborative project? Yes, no. If it is, I have to explain the coordination of data management responsibilities across partners. Let's say that uh, 
partner x partner x is dealing with data processing partner y is developing and scripts to analyze the data and so on so uh, things like that um, indicate who is responsible for implementing the DMP and for ensuring it is reviewed and if necessary revised this should be the same uh, name as it was back in the contact so as with the person that is creating the DMP from scratch uh, so in this case it's me What resources will be dedicated to data management and ensuring that data will be fair? Uh, explain how the necessary resources uh, um, are costed. So what are the, how, how I'm dealing with costs? Am I using a national infrastructure to, to compensate costs? Am I using institutional infrastructure? Um, do I have a grant uh, that I can use for the infrastructure to, to get uh, more more uh, services and or build even develop an infrastructure from scratch. Uh, do I collaborate with other projects so I, I can select multiple um, and indicate whether additional resources will be needed to prefer data for deposit or to meet any ch any charges for data repositories. Uh, yes and no again uh, and at the end. Uh, what is the, the total cost? Like, let's say it's uh, 3,000 euros um, yeah, that I will need for data management. And uh, this I see um, should have been, it's, it's third in, in, in in a row, but for some reason it appeared here, but we can fix it because it's nothing stable at the moment. So we can we can fix it and we will have it um, correct in, in Argos. How will it, uh, it's about reusable data. How will existing data uh, be reused um, and how uh, I'm using other, people, other people's data, the researchers data to a follow-up research on a specific topic and to develop new products, let's say. Uh, I can provide the URL of the DMP of the used data where the DMP is described. Um, where can reuse data be found? Uh, I can search for repositories again that uh, are in, yeah, that are in opener, and um, let's say that I want um, um, I will I will deposit them there, and if I can't find it, I can uh, add repository. URL and I can select which are the data sets exactly the data sets that I'm reusing 3D models let's say that I'm reusing this data set or another one again I can provide the URL if, if, if it's not here I can provide the URL and state any constraints on reuse of existing data and briefly state the reason if uh, reuse of existing data have been considered but discarded. Um, so this is uh, this is the concept, and this, uh, these are the thematic uh, areas uh, that uh, Chistera has selected um, for for the DMP template. Um, you see that uh, it, it has to do with how you how how you are handling your data within the project, how you plan to share and preserve the data afterwards, um, how you allocate uh, resources for data management, who is responsible for doing uh, what in, in, this, uh, in, in the data management planning workflow. Um, what, what is, uh, if there are used data, 
what are uh, are there any restrictions to to use it what are the specific data that are for use uh, and so on um so once you have created it you can save save and close on save it and add new i can save it save and close let's say um and then i can view uh, my uh, again I, I can review i can go through the, the steps and review what i've done and add new data sets at any point that i want uh, if i have new data and then if i go to my home uh, or sorry, my DMPs, I can see that this is the DMP that I have created. It's, uh, it's on my dashboard. I can view um, that I'm the owner. Uh, I can see if there is a different version of that already available, if, if I'm, if I'm revi if revising it. Edit, clone, delete my DMP. See what is the grant uh, associated to this DMP. See who are the researchers working on it. Uh, what is the description uh, of, the, of the DMP, what the project is and how it's created, uh, and what are the data sets used, uh, how many and what kind of data sets. I can then finalize it, uh, export it or start new version, um, and I can invite people to work with me, for example. Um, Okay, let's say Yamantis that I have his name now here, so I can invite people to uh, join me in writing this DMP. Um, I can export it, as I mentioned, PDF document, XML, RDA, JSON. Let's say that I want the PDF. Oh, it takes longer the PDF. Let's say that I want the document. Oh, you won't be able to see now, or or are you? New sir. So now, okay. So now uh, this is the the plan. Oops. He, hello. Oh yes. Sharing was stopped. It's it's. Uh, yes. We don't see your screen anymore. Now? Now we see uh, a, a document, uh, a Word it's, document. Exactly. Data, it's management, data management plan, plan information. Plan. Yes. OK. So this is the data management plan. I can see what I have created uh, in a Word document. I can change. I can add headers. I can do whatever I want. I can add a, a logo, uh, you know, uh, re re restructure things as I would like. I can uh, even uh, now remove, uh, let's say, things and write write them in a more concrete way uh, with with in paragraphs and uh, in, in sentences. Um, yeah, and this is how it looks like. Right. These are all the questions and the answers. Um, let's see. Oh, not again. Okay, let me see. Okay, and then I can also finalize. Uh, let's say that I'm now ready to share it with, uh, to deposit it. I can finalize it. Uh, I, I have to cross check uh, this information that it's the DMP for Gistera. Yes, the description is correct. This, this data set. Uh, usually here you will see if you have more than one data set, which you, it's the case that you will have, you can uh, even here select if you have a data set with personal data, let's say or sensitive data that you don't want to publish and you want to keep outside from this bundle, then you can uh, not uh, select it. So what you select, you will publish as well. So if you don't select, you don't publish. Uh, it's, it's very handy for, for handling sensitive information and metadata as well. And submit. So I'm submitting it, I'm submitting it and I'm deposing uh, this uh, to, to Zenodo. Yes, this I want to deposit. Oh, yes, because I am in 
Okay, I am in the beta version and I don't have the right to deposit. But if you go to argos.openet.eu, click deposit, then you will be redirected to the Nodo login page. And if you if you log in with your uh, so here you will see a pop up with the Nodo when you click deposit and add your um, your uh, credentials and publish when you click publish it will be automatically there you don't have to do anything else uh, yes okay. so I can always start new version if I want um, and I can uh, edit the new version and move from there so, Uh, I really wanted to, I, I would like to, I would have liked actually, because I see that the time is, we are short on time. Um, I would have liked you to also um, go through a one section and, you know, let us know what are the challenges that you faced because this is this is an ongoing. This is not stable at the moment, as I said. This template, so we can we have time to uh, further and uh, to improve it. So your input uh, would be actually valuable. If there are things that you you feel that you don't fully understand, we can provide uh, more uh, guidance on them uh, on the template itself uh, before the question or after the question. Uh, but, but, okay, I, I, I understand that we don't have uh, the time and we don't have the, the breakout session facility who, that could uh, help with that. But uh, during this, um, during this, uh, maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe we have a, a module four, maybe I can take uh, 20 minutes from that module and we can do it uh, in, in, on Friday. I think that would be good. I, I can do that then. But until then, is the, is something that is not uh, clear? Is it's the first question? And second question is: uh, Would you need support? Do you feel that you need support um, on which uh, specific, which exact areas um, from the from the demo uh, as as I as you show? While uh, um, they think and write possible questions about these, uh, we should remember to ask to the question, to the argument that was oh, about yes. ORCID. Um, yes, thank you. Because we have it, uh, yes, we, we can use this uh, few minutes uh, giving some time to the people to write any questions or comments in the chat or a question and answer. Uh, yes, to discuss with uh, Manuel. I, uh, sorry, I don't see if Manuel is still online. Yes, he is. Uh, Manuel was arguing that ORCID is not a good solution because they do not keep track of your publication. And Zenodo instead is perfect for that. So you can maybe comment on this. No, sorry, sorry. Zenodo is very good yeah. for archiving the, the data, but the uh, archive or mm -hmm. is just uh, it's empty. It's nothing because they they, they only give you a, a number, but they don't check anything. They don't track anything. Uh, I think a Google Scholar is much better. It's a much um. more <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but I, I trust a Google Scholar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't trust the uh, uh, signing with uh, Google into any any service. I have okay. uh, a Google account as everybody, but uh, almost everybody. But I think uh, for uh, uh, yeah yeah Orkide, I don't think uh, why uh, the institutions are enforcing this uh, registration that is for nothing. It's uh, it's useless. I don't mm -hmm. know. For me, it's a mystery. So, okay, let's see. 
so the nodo is the repository uh, where you upload deposit your 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 papers your data all the outputs right and you also go to search uh, for for them right or other people's uh, project uh, outputs um it doesn't necessarily binds those outputs with the authors uh, so it doesn't create those links with uh, it, it does because it uses orchid to be honest it, it, so if, if you apply your orchid it, it will create the links but uh, orchid is something different it's a different tool than zenodo and google scholar google scholar oh, is absolutely absolutely i know i know i know i have uploaded a lot of things to zenodo and i also have my archive or uh, account and the Orkaida account is useless. It's useless. It's useless. I, I, I think uh, you have to distinguish two things. I think Dimitris has his Rezanda. I will uh, open your mic, uh, Dimitris. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, just to respond to Manuel, uh, one thing is is your, um, how to say, the platform, uh, uh, the ORCID platform where you go and you uh, put your details about your institution and so on. And one other thing is the use that we can make by building uh, services on the fact that people have a single ID, mm -hmm. which is what, for example, open air is doing because, for example, in the open air graph, we do use your ORCID ID uh, to find you and to track your, your results. So do not, uh, you need to distinguish to what is available on the ORCID uh, website. I think, uh, actually, I think I have two Orchid uh, accounts because um, uh, I started with one uh, email mm -hmm. address and then I think my institution changed uh, yes. the, 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 the suffix. So I have two accounts in Orchid mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's useless, absolutely useless. It's, it's for nothing. I don't know. Why? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Absolutely no, but it's, crazy. A, it's a, okay. But, uh, so you, me, when you say when you say it's useless because you refer to no, but the, the main, platform the main thing, where the you main go. thing of Orchid is to keep track of the works of people. Yeah. Yes. To have some kind of uh, uh, warranty or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, if you have to uh, introduce all your or all your publications and everything, well, when you are young, maybe if you have two or three papers, it's okay. Uh, at my age, it's not okay. So I expect the, the service to keep track of my publications and more, uh, more uh, important that they check if I am trying to uh, introduce something that is not um, mine. So they... they and they do, they do nothing. They do nothing. <laughs> it's crazy. But because they <laughs> sorry. are not sorry the ones. Be, um, so, sorry so to be, but to... it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy scheme. It's, it's crazy. It's okay. uh, absolutely empty. I, I don't know why everybody in Spain, but, they but... are using Orchid, Orchid as a kind of reference, like a, uh, but it's useless. <laughs> okay, but it's useless. Well, if okay, it's useless. Look at my, at my Orchid uh, account, I only have two papers because uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, you crazy. can check. You have to Sorry. also act on that because you yes. have to you click on uh, add, add a reference. I don't remember how it's called now. Um, maybe. Did you see my new tab now? Yeah, yeah, you, you must add, but I can add a lot of references that are not mine. So they, they have to they have to, to check. And they don't they do nothing. They do nothing. It's crazy. They do <laughs> because it, sorry. They, they collaborate. So, but I think it's not it's not a I think it's uh it's not a topic of, of this presentation. So sorry for raising this, this issue. <laughs> no, no problem. And, uh, so uh, maybe Dimitris wants to add something about this. Hello, I am Dimitris de Cuniotis. I am a researcher in National Technical University of Athens, and uh, I work on a sister project called DruidNet. 
and uh, we are funding from the 2018 call of Drinet. So let me express first uh, my opinion on on this uh, discussion about Orchid and uh, the other tools. Mm -hmm. I agree with Manuel that the uh, Orchid is not um, very convenient because you have to add manually your uh, your publication. I don't know if. Uh, then uh, the references are uh, automatically uh, presented. But also, I use also Google Scholar, but I think that Google Scholar uh, now misses some uh, references. So you have a rough view of your uh, visibility, but uh, it's not the exact view. Because uh, I, from my personal experience, uh, Google Scholar sent me sent once alert to me that a paper, uh, my paper is referenced by another paper, but uh, it was uh, it was uh, never counted on my on my references. Or mm -hmm. I know that there are papers that uh, has uh, have cited my work, but uh, they are not. Uh, count on uh, they are not they are not shown in uh, Google Scholar metrics, but uh, I, I I just um, check it from other uh, tools like ResearchGate or uh, something like this. Uh, we are here. We like also Zenodo because we we are part of Fed for Fire project, which is a large uh, Horizon Twin. Horizon 2020 project, and um, we give a lot of money to external experimenters to use our facilities for experimentation in ICT technologies, and uh, we encourage them to to upload their um, their data their ex from their experiment to Zenodo platform in order to be reproducible and visible for many other uh, experimenters from industry and research. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I would like to ask also something else. Uh, you mentioned before that uh, we have to we have to create a data management plant before before the end of the of the first year, am I right or, or not? Uh, Ahmad uh, told us uh, um, about the correct um, the correct period when this is stated. This is stated in the policy, so you can also view that uh, from from the policy um, of Chistera. Uh, but it's uh, it's in three months, uh, I think, and one, one year, right? Ahmad? You confirm? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so three. So, so far for the past call, it's within the first year, but then from the next call on, so for next year, that will be three months. Okay, we are in from the project call, start. We are. We were funded on the call of 2018. It's just okay. two years ago, but we our uh, our projects uh, started on uh, May of 2020 this year. Okay, so you don't ha actually for the call 2018, you don't have to, uh, you have no such requirements. I think that was on the on the old, uh, the good old days. I have to check again, but I think you don't have any any obligations of, of DMP and, and data sharing, but of course you can do, obviously. So um, so if you want, I, I would personally strongly encourage to, to try out the, the Argos tool uh, okay. and 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 submit it and keep keep updating the uh, uh, the DMP so the tools are available and and will be available okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much yeah. because uh, we we have uh, we had uh, described uh, a, a data management plan on uh, on our proposal and we will create a data management plan uh, but uh, we didn't know if there is a strict uh, deadline for this. So yep. we are willing to use uh, Argos and it seems a very helpful uh, 
tool to create the data management plan, and especially for us, which are not very, uh, we are not experts on this. So I hope that Argos will help us to to build something meaningful. Yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully, I'm I'm sure. Okay. Yes, and thank as you I said, very much. Thank you. If there are, uh, because this is uh, again a trial period, this 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 uh, next two three weeks, you can. Uh, uh, let us know if you find uh, anything missing or if you need more guidance. And overall, we we are here to, to support you, nevertheless. So. Okay, thank you very much. I see Q, the Q&A. Uh, Orchid can be populated in connection with several services, publics, etc. Yes, so this was yes. uh, what I was um, uh, trying to say before. We it, it, actually the orchid gives you the the number, and then the population and the tracking can be done by other services. Like as I said, um, uh, Open Air is uh, is uh, applying. Uh, um, um, mining for for uh, looking at the orchid ids and other platforms allow you to search for specific orchid ids like zenodo for example and uh, mm -hmm. so uh, this is the it, it's what you can build on on the on the tool that is interesting not the platform itself um uh, but you can I, I populate it also manually and also by downloading references from other sources. So it's linked, for example, to... Um, As I understand, Orchid is a private uh, uh, enterprise. It's not, uh, it's not funded by... No, it's an initiative. It's not... <laughs> something <laughs> like it's for, uh, sustained by, by, I don't know, Elsevier, Springer, I don't oh, know. No, 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 no. no, no, no. No, no, this is no, but otherwise we won't include that in fair principle. <laughs> yes, <I don't> <laughs> no, 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 it's not, uh, it's not a private, it's uh, actually it's it's an initiative uh, that uh, has been funded Some, by, yes, yeah, supported by library, li libraries, uh, so libraries fund uh, all the different repositories to get uh, the, the POIs and uh, integrate them in the system. So this is, uh, yes, it, the, the DOI, sorry, the ORCIDs, I'm sorry. So ORCIDs is part of this uh, open and fair ecosystem. Uh, and it's one way to uh, assign PIDs for researchers, for individuals. It's like, you know, our, our, our identity in, in the scientific world. And it's unique and it's persistent. So it means that we, we can, um, we, we will be able to, uh, find and access it uh, in the long term. So, plus it helps to distinguish uh, us, uh, our work from uh, similarly uh, uh, similarly named authors, which is uh, plus. But uh, yes, it, it's ORCID is in the, in this ecosystem, uh, sustained by the community. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we have, um, yeah, we have uh, other other comments about this. Uh, Orchid can provide easy access to many manuscripts platforms. Yes, uh, it it depends. Yes, it basically depends also on the uh, services that are built on it. So, for example, now yes. they're trying to to assign IDs to also to organizations. Um, it's it's a huge initiative. It's actually a non-for-profit organization, but it's it's an initiative of the community. So um, I don't see any other questions in the chat or in, in the question and answer. So um, okay, I will uh, say that we will have a, a, an exercise so that you uh, get the chance to use uh, Argos. Uh, on Friday, so I have noted that, uh, since we didn't have the times and the means to do that now. But yeah, other than that, mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. I also inform you that I, I sent to all of those that were um, registered an email with the link to the page where you can find all the material so far uh, shared. So I believe Ellie will put uh, her presentation. I think Ellie is in order, right? Yes, yes, everything. Yes, and, and, and then uh, we will link it in the page so you have all the material and the recordings as well. So thank you very much. And if you have any question before the next lesson, so please drop us a message. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, thank you.